Hello and welcome to the Beverage Podcast, episode 27. Uh, I still don't have a catchphrase. <laughs> you can rip one off from Stanley if you want. Yeah. It's just like some podcasts have like things that they say every time at the beginning. Well, this isn't like every other podcast. You're a different Tucker. Be proud of that. Okay. This is the Beverage Podcast where we talk about comics and superhero stuff. I thought about like... The only podcast that quenches your thirst for superhero and pop and hero news, but that's hard to say. This, this, right. <laughs> Quench is a hard word. The hero quencher. Now that's not too I'm much not. like well, power thirst. I my guests this week are Kyle Samuelson and Jared. Hello. Might you might chime in every once in a while. <laughs> yep. It's going on his phone. Ding ding. Playing this game. game. So like always. I asked my guests what they did this week. What did you watch, read, listen to? Uh, this week, I have watched Flash and Arrow. I have not gotten to watch uh, the season finale of Legends of Tomorrow yet, which is sad because I actually really enjoy that show. Um, also, I watched got Gotham. that spoiled for me. I was on Twitter that night, like that night, like in the AM, and it's just like, oh, here's that end thing, and I'm just like. Fuck. Here's my rule. I can't have a day before I can watch it. No, here's my one rule, though, okay? And my thing is, like, especially if that's where you focus a lot of the places you, you frequent on Twitter or Facebook are related to comic stuff, just, I know it's not the easiest thing to do in our world, but you just gotta stay off the internet. Like, I was on, back for Star Wars New Hope when it came out, okay? I was on a completely unrelated post. I was, I was on a sports post of all fucking things, okay? And I'll get thing, and dude, it's been five months. If you have not watched Star Wars Episode Seven yet, that's your fault. You um, said a New Hope. Sorry, New Hope. Sorry, you did. <laughs> not New Hope. I'm like, wait, it's wait. Well, is. basically, you know, Star Wars a new New Hope. It's a, um, it's a preboot. A new, a New Hope. Um, and somewhere was like Han Solo gets murdered by Kylo Ren and his son Kylo Ren, and I'm like, what the actual fuck? Like, I was gonna see it literally f- three hours later, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? And I was, so my rule is, like, I know people who spoil for the sake of spoiling are total jackasses, but, like, just stay off the internet. Like, I know it's hard, but you just gotta stay off the internet sometimes. Captain America uh, Civil War almost got spoiled for me, but, like, the thing somebody put on as a spoiler wasn't actually the spoiler, Mm -hmm. wasn't a spoiler, so I was very happy, because the whole movie I'm sitting there watching, they're like, oh, great, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? And then it never came, and then I'm like, oh. What was the fake spoiler? I mean, it's been, what, two weeks now? Well, yeah. it's a fake spoiler, so... Oh, well, no, oh, sorry. Well, okay, but it's a fake spoiler that people might think of. Somebody put that Captain America dies. Okay? Like, that's what happens after which, that comic. Which, yeah, and I'm like, technically, you can say Captain America maybe is dead because he's just Steve Rogers now, I guess. I don't know. Sorry, it's been two weeks. I don't care anymore. Um, hey, you've seen it. Yeah, you, you people who listen to this have probably seen it by now. Um... But, so he's not dead, but someone posted that, and I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, come on, I am, I am on a My Little Pony fucking, like, gay porn site. Why, are, no, no, I was on that site. But, like, you know, Sponsor. shit like that. <laughs> Tell us more about your personal life, please. <laughs> Those are the worst for spoilers. Just but the yeah. ones who came out of nowhere. Uh, so you watch Arrow mm-hmm. and Flash. Yep. Is that it? Um, I watch Gotham, but you don't like Gotham, so we're not gonna talk about Gotham. 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 Gotham is a really good show. I for feel, those, I've seen a lot of stuff about like they did Mister Freeze and right. they're doing Clayface next. Yeah. it's a really good show for people who like don't care about canon. Because if you care about canon even a little bit, the show will fuck you up. Uh, don't watch Gotham if you like Batman mythology staying yeah. the way it is. It's, yeah, it's completely from, different, but I feel like they do a good job with it. They do. It's just if, if if you're someone who really likes canon, it's not the show for you because they they do a fun job with the characters. It's really awesome, but Batman is still like 15, 16 years old in this. He's at least four years away from becoming Batman, at best. I'd say he's like ten years away. Right, like I said, if you want, you can say Batman became Batman at twenty, if you want to. But like you're at, you're at best, you know, four four or five years from from any kind of semblance of canon. From what I. Gage, and I've never watched the show, it's like the villains are already there or something, but mm-hmm. in the comics it's like the villains don't show up 
uh, is filmed until Batman shows up. Right, and this one, the villains are and, definitely... And that is definitely an idea that I think is interesting. If, like, Batman becomes Batman because there's already a bunch of costume guys running around, he's like, well, I'll be a costume guy. Right. Which is an interesting idea, but I don't want to watch a show about Gotham without Batman in it. <laughs> the, the first season's really hard to get through, um, up until near the end. Mostly because... Uh, Jada Ping and Smith's Fish Mooney, I can't stand her character. Like, she is just so over the Is she now, I I don't know, like, all the Batman lore. Is she even a character in the Batman? It's like something I've heard? never heard of her. I was pretty sure she was made up for the show. She's really hard to get through, but the second season, when they started doing all the villain stuff, you know, last season they had Penguin and um, and Riddler before he was Riddler and stuff like that. But this season, they got, they, they really went hardcore with, with the classic Batman characters, um, villains. And, um... And so that's way better, but, um, I mean, you, the second season is far, far better to watch, you know, you just gotta, you gotta trek through that first season first, um, and it, it really might turn you off at certain places, but it's a show after it ends, maybe you want to take a look at to see, what did I miss on, you know, mm -hmm. and it's probably not something you missed, like, a, it's not like you missed Seinfeld or Friends, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that makes the first season really good is, uh, just how they focus on Gordon and just everything, the way that all works out, because he's not commissioner yet, right. so he's still working his way up, trying to earn his place and all that. And then he sees the corruption and all all the things going on, and he's not really okay with it, but he kind of has to do what he has to do sometimes. Gotta play the game. So that's what I think makes first season really good. Benjamin McKenzie, no matter whether it's the OC or... There was this cop show he was in on TNT for a while that I really liked, or in this, he, something about him playing this gritty authority figure guy who needs to follow the law but doesn't follow the law i don't know but he's just a terrific actor even if he has to overact the character because it's a comic book show sometimes you overact some um the characters he is just really good as jim gordon he's really good in that kind of position like you know i'm, I'm glad he's finally on a show that's getting um getting the vehicle moving along they're they're giving gotham time and just got it renewed for a third season and so they're giving it some serious time because he he just he brings something to that show that makes it so much more watchable um, than because I really felt like I said Jada Pinkett Smith really like really hurt me on the first season. Her acting is just really bad. It's really over the top. But he keeps the vehicle moving along because he's just he's that good in that show. Um, is that it? So enough about that show we said we weren't going to talk about. Sorry. <laughs> it's, the, it's the one time we're going to talk about Gotham on the show. Um, no, I, the, it's fine. You can talk about it. I just, he, he just I'm sure there's people out there who watch it. I, of the five people who listen to this podcast. <laughs> there's not a lot of uh, other comic stuff that was out this week, was there? I don't know. I'm behind on all the comic book shows. Yeah. Because I like Flash a lot and I like Arrow, but I haven't watched them for a few weeks. Oh, fuck. You're stuck behind, I'm, aren't I'm a little you? bit behind. Uh, You'll just, forget about it in a year. As I just told you all before we came live, I just finished watching Civil War. That was amazing. Civil War was great. Um, That's what Jared did this week. He watched Civil War. Yes, yeah, so I went and watched it a little late because <laughs> my my dad had his birthday on the 10th. And um, the weekend that it came out, uh, that it was actually off, um, they were busy. So I waited so I could watch it with him. Because that's what he wanted to do for his birthday. So uh, we went and did that. Uh, I really like how they did that whole uh, intro and everything. Where they kind of elaborated on uh, Bucky's character and how he's important. Uh, that was very good. Uh, Spider-Man. Did you see the twist at the end coming? Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can say that I really saw it coming. Mm -hmm. I knew something was going to happen, but I wasn't really sure exactly how they were going to do it. Because if you watch yeah. Civil Winter Soldier before that, there's a lot. Well, I don't want to talk about too much. But. There's, there, you're right. Well, we, some... had, we had a spoiler episode last week. Yeah, so. there's, there's some illusion now that I watch it, but I, I audibly okay. gasped in the theater. I'm like, oh no. I did too. I was like, what? And I'm glad I didn't see it coming because I think Ross said that he saw it coming like from the beginning. And I was I like, Ross I feel like. sorry for him because I feel like that's a great. <laughs> I do. I feel sorry for people who figure stuff out too quick because so you don't get to be surprised. I think, I think Ross lied and said he did just so he could act like he, he was he wasn't surprised. Oh, we're calling maybe <laughs> we're calling out Ross right we're now. Calling people out on the podcast. Uh, yeah, but Spider Man, uh, the guy who played Spider Man, did amazing. Absolutely. Uh, so proud. 
Well done. Uh, I brought that guy. I don't even know. <laughs> the, the two questionable acting choices for this year for the for beloved characters, Batman and Spider-Man, both of them were kicked ass in, in their characters, despite think, how you felt about the movies. Yeah, Batman was one of the better parts of Batman vs. Superman. And he's all he's saying he's all sad about it. There's all these memes about him, sad Affleck. <laughs> Have you yeah. seen those? He's in the interview, and they got... And he, and, I haven't. Uh, Henry Cavill's answering the question. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, why are you sad? Like, I know you weren't bad. This. I know how to fix this situation. Ready? Martha! <laughs> Alright, everything's fine. Everything was happy again. Let me get some water. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you do anyth anything else, Jared? Just watch Civil War? Anything nerdy? Doesn't have to be comic book related. Uh, I got Final Fantasy X. Just came out on Steam for like 20 bucks. I don't know if it's still there, but. Is that the online one or is that 11? Steam is I think the. No, Final Fantasy. When did they start online? There's the one. There's an MMO. Oh, no. There's that, Final that Fantasy MMO. That one's not online. That one's just straight regular RPG. That's just the story one. Oh, okay, yeah. So then I think it's There's 11, 10 and 10 2. And... Yeah, and it, it's got 10 and 10 2 on oh, it. Oh, but the girls. Okay. And they change their clothes. The yes. oh, what? <laughs> and they change their clothes. Yes. They have dress spheres. Because you can't have girls in a game without outfits. And I can tell you all about that because I spent so much try time trying to 100% that game. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I finished Pokemon Yellow again. I bought it on oh. the DS. Here's, that's thingy. a good segue into what I did this week, actually. I, I commented a little bit on the beverage page about... How I found a Dragon Ball Z mod for Fire Red, mm -hmm. where nice. they replace all of the Pokemon with fighters, and they basically they replace everything. Like all the gym leaders are like Mr. Satan and Yachirobi. And so, uh, what are the three starters then? Uh, Goku, Vegeta, and uh, Gohan. You pick Vegeta. Gohan, right? really? I'm kind of surprised by that. It's like a uh, teen Gohan. He goes Gohan, then he goes Super Saiyan Gohan, then Ultimate Gohan, which is like the Black haired one that fights Machin Boo. Like that age. They might pick Piccolo. They have like three different ages. Uh, well, they're Saiyans, so. Well, I guess that's. You want your star to be a Super Saiyan, so. Is Krillin the Raditz out of the game? Or is that, or is that um, Yamcha? No, Saiba men are the. Okay. Are the Raditz. Fair Yamcha enough. is kind of sucky, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like in the show. What's and a Raditz? Is Yamcha. that like a Yamcha? <laughs> uh. I don't know. And later, your girlfriend will be Bulma. When they get a couple I games down I, the road. Bulma's a gym leader. Oh. She's Erica. What? Oh, okay. That's fucking weird. What about uh, Chi Chi? What, what is she? Uh, she your mom? Found her. She's mom. Master Roshi. Fight for the mom. Is but... Master Roshi the professor? Master. No, Dr. Brief is. Bulma's dad is the professor. He's Dr. an actual scientist. Okay. Master Roshi is. Is he like a The one on that, on that island. Oh, Blade. Yeah. Oh yeah, that guy. Who okay. who's like the Lance and the Gary? I haven't got that far. Gary is just Gary. He's oh, okay. just your rival. He's just your rival. Gary. Like you and your your sprite and Gary are just. Do you remember? Normal. Did you remember to save the second time going around? <laughs> I didn't know I could save the first time because that most emulators you can't. So I was just like, or that's how I, just in my head. That's what oh. I thought. So I was just like, I got. I was plowing through. I played like six hours on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I got at the Victory Road, and I was like, I don't know, I, you know, I test saved, but I didn't see if it worked at the very beginning of the game. Oh. So I was like, okay, I, maybe if I tried pushing some buttons on my keyboard, so I pushed escape, and it just like, ran, crashed. Yeah, that's the one you don't want to push. <laughs> that's super sad. And so I've been, I've been going through it slower this time, because I had, like... Did you try the F keys? That's super Sometimes sad. the F keys. No, I can just yeah. save, like, in the game, you just go into your start save and it works like that yeah and i had like majin vegeta was my main guy and he was like 20 levels higher than everyone else because i was basically plying through the game one shotting everything with majin vegeta so how do you do that how do you get him to majin is he just an evolution that's just his final oh okay. his three stages is vegeta super saiyan vegeta and majin wow. vegeta and you can find the tails okay and you can give him a tail, it's like a stone, and he becomes Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Sweet. So it's, it is based off the Kanto region then? Like, yeah. That's the way it's you around? It's a fire red mod. Okay. Oh, it's a fire red mod, so mm -hmm. what'd they do with the three islands? Uh, Have you ended up I did that a little bit. I, haven't, I didn't really explore it. 
I was just plowing through it. Oh, is it because I'm like, did you get like, um, my question is like, who's the Moltres character? Like, because on the I island three or something, and you can get there as soon as you get there, you can go find Moltres at the top of one of the mountains. Uh, but, I but if you didn't explore it. I didn't explore it. I, I think it's Brawly. That makes sense. Uh, Bojack is Articuno. I know that. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Right now, I've been replaying it, and my team is the Guinea Force and Frieza. Nice. <laughs> I just got Birder and Jace last night, so they're only at 25. But i got to get them up to 40 before I keep going. But I think... Is fighting... Is Ice weak against fighting? Yes. Because uh, I think Frieza's an Ice type. Because yes. every time you do a fighting move, you like instantly dies. <laughs> yes. Fighting I don't know about that one. If you'd like, I can look right, up right. all the things right now and interrupt this podcast and just and we can run down the list yeah. of weaknesses and strengths. <laughs> yeah, I have a final form Frieza and at fifty it becomes a gold Frieza from the movie. Oh cool. So But if you have um if you have fly, fighting is weak against fly, so fighting is weak against a it's lot funny of things. It fly is an HM and they they get all Lord Fly, <laughs> basically. <laughs> It what sucks is there's only like one water character in the whole game, and he's so oh. he has your HM slave basically. Oh, I'm like, how the fuck do you surf? There's a guy named Aqua. He was in the uh, he was in the older world tournament. So those um, those Ratata clones aren't the they don't uh, they don't HM uh, slave you give you, they don't allow them to surf. Uh -oh. There's a guy named the Bear Thief who's like from a he's like a Dragon Ball character and mm -hmm. he has a sword so he can learn to cut. I'm not sure if he can learn strength. I think in my last playthrough, Aqua had st strength and surf. So, nice. And he had, and Bear Thief has a sword, so he knows cut. <laughs> I, I want to get future trunks. He's when you get from the, uh, you buy with coins at like the game oh, okay. place. Oh, yeah. So he's like your Porygon? Yeah. He's, so he's like, the the one who's worth 999 is the Go Tanks. Yeah. Oh, it's Go Tanks. Okay. And trunk, future trunks has 5,500, then Bardock, and then. Some other guy. I won all of those at one point. Not exactly those, like Porygon and stuff, mm -hmm. because I had no life when I played that game. That's uh, literally, all I, did. Right now. I spent about four hours at the um, at the lottery in Pokemon Yellow a couple weeks ago. I also been playing through. You can just buy games coins. And, you can just buy coins, but I spent a lot of time like just playing, winning, <laughs> winning the things. I hit the sevens. Uh, it was four hours. I hit the sevens twelve times. Yeah, so, if you get in a groove, you can hit the sevens like every time for well, a while. I've uh, I have emulators on my phone, and mm -hmm. so I've been playing. Uh, I play Fire Red. I played. Um, I'm in the middle of Black and White on this one. I did. Um, there's another one I did. Oh, um, uh, Soul Silver or Heart Gold because that's the perfect Pokemon game. Um, and then I'm currently playing X and Y again on my on my DS. Mm -hmm. I just read, actually, since we're on that, I just read about this uh, adult version. Was that you who posted, shared it? Um, I might have. Pokemon Apex. Yeah, that. Um, the Pokemon Apex where it's an adult version, so they have, like, dark storylines, and they actually encourage you to read the stories because they have, like, dark subtext and actual stories and crazy things, and there's death and sadness, you know, mm -hmm. more than the uh, tower. And it's like know. an actual RPG with quests and stuff. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked into it, but... Yeah. So I don't know what'll happen if I try and load another emulator. I might lose all my Dragon Ball again. <laughs> on a, on Imager, there um, there's this list, and I hope to find it again. But a list of a bunch of Pokemon um, mods and different um, games, and there's one that like combined all the regions with all the Pokemon, and you can get and you can start wherever you want and earn your way through, and it gets you know obviously good progressively harder. That a lot of people like you know who were commenting were like, yeah, no, I played this. That game was the shit. It took me like two weeks to finish but it was it was the absolute shit because you know it's just everything you want in the games right well before we move on i just want to say that i was training my frieza in namek town and it's so much it feels so good to just kill namekians <laughs> as frieza <laughs> that's how i was training just like death beam death beam death beam death beam what's namek in the game uh namek town but like what's the uh it's misty's town oh okay Oh, so, so do they have them on, like, the bridge for you to go beat? There's, like, Namekians Dam just walking around. They have their own sprite. Oh. But this game sounds interesting. I it's a lot of... It's really well done. Like, all the way they change the names of things and all how they change the sprites. and Who's, uh, who's the bad guy uh, in the ghost tower? 
the last ghost. Carl it, Jr. Oh, it's not it's not Frieza who's been brought back from the dead. No, it's Carly <laughs> Jr. Or, that's, or that, cooler. The tower is like uh, the lookout. Mm-hmm. His comments at the top. Oh, okay. So Garlic Jr. is taking it over. Gotcha. And the bad guy, the ghost types are King Piccolo, evil King Piccolo from Dragon Ball. Nice. Yep. It's a lot. It's a, that is really well thought out. No, hey, it's, that's really good. It's very Yeah, impressive. I highly recommend it to anyone who likes Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball. We do not condone the use of copyrighted games. And it's free. You just download games. it. <laughs> I had, this, I had this argument with Jared earlier about about illegal do- uh, downloading copyright games. We had this, we had this argument earlier. We don't condone that, but if you if you find it, it's at www.whateverTuckerSays.com. You can Google it. <laughs> That's what I had to do. Uh, yeah. So we're not saying it isn't out there. We're Pokemon just news. saying you could probably Google the it. The new starters were announced for Sun and Moon. Ooh. I did not write them down. I just have the links here. I don't know <laughs> it's anything. It's an owl, 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 Owlet, um, Rowlet, or a flying grass. Yeah. Uh, pup, pup, Puplio. Puplio, who's a it's seal-looking like, clown guy. Yeah. Sweet. And then, he's a water type. And then the cat. Well, and Litten, who is a little cute cat. Right now. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. And they announced, I don't think they said their names, but they showed the legendaries mm-hmm. and the box art. Yeah. And it's basically Hawaii is what they're basing it on. And we, yeah, we saw a picture of the uh, professor as well. Mm-hmm. So, what do we think of them? Puplio is getting some hate, but... <laughs> Which, you know what? Puplio is going to end up like this water fairy type that's just going to fuck everybody's shit up because it's going to be great against the dra- uh, inevitable dragon you go up against at the end. I'm sorry, but water types are always awesome. I, War Turtle is my favorite Pokemon. I have an awesome. Have you seen my War Turtle shirt? I have this. Uh, I think I have. I have this awesome shirt that Kayla got me from uh, Bubble Tea. I do recommend Bubble Tea. They are great. Um, BubbleTea.com, where he like he's got this badass like. Surf uh, not, a or not a sponsor. Not a not a sponsor. If you want to sponsor me, that's fine. I only have like five people listen to this. That's but. fair. But I um, mean, he's got this cool thing. So you're right. Water Pokemon are pretty solid. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, Squirrel's an easy choice when your first gym is a rock gym. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like, even before you know that you have the rock gym for the first gym, Squirtle is still an awesome choice. And Squirtle can learn Ice Beam or uh, Aurora Beam, and you can and find that can key learn somewhere. And he can learn Dig. Yeah, fuck yeah. Squirtle's good. Um, yeah. But I'm excited. I actually am really excited for Litten, because Litten, just like the way it looks, and I commented this on your page, it looks like it's going to turn into a fire electric type, which I don't. I, fire I, electric. Yeah, it looks like it can turn into I, a fire electric type. I don't know about that. But. Um, just like the way its tail is shaped and everything, it just kind of reminds me a little bit of Pikachu's. Um, and it just something about it makes me think it's going to turn to. I think if it's going like to be a dual type, it'd be fire dark. That'd be that'd be okay, but I we haven't seen a fire electric yet. I don't think, and so I think that'd be a really cool. It's mix. a weird mix. He'd be fucked up by ground type. Ground types would murder him. But, um, murder! And then Rally obviously, is the flying grass. Um, I, though I do wonder... If all three starters get a dual type, then? Usually by the end, they do. They do? Yeah. Um, so I remember... They have for the longest time. Hmm. Now, now, the game... Now, the originals, they didn't, but I think... And the, the first two, I know two, that they the didn't. last one, I know that Umbor is, like, firefighting the pig one from the last one. For, um, Ruby Sapphire... Diamond Pearl and um, Black and White, um, it was firefighting. But then the last one, X and Y, it was fire um, psychic. Oh, yeah, that Fox. was a little foxy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, most of them get it. Uh, the first two, I don't think, did that that way, except though um, Bulbasaur was grass poison, I believe. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Bulbasaur is grass yeah, poison. Yeah, grass poison. Um, but I'd, like I said, I'd like to see, um, I mean, a fire dark school, but, uh, there has been rumor at least, and of course everything is rumor until the next couple weeks when they release more information. There's rumor they're going to start doing triple, um, that's ridiculous. Triple types. <laughs> You're right. It is ridiculous. So everyone's like really hyped up stop? about, when does it stop? Everyone's hyped up about, this Pokemon has all the types. <laughs> yeah. This Pokemon is named it's super effective and not very effective yourself. at the same that's time. Obviously is depending on how, what plates you put on, but, um, there's, uh. So, you know, Rowlet, everyone's hyped about grass flying, finally, though it's also going to get super fucked up by ice type. Right. Um, but, I mean, you know, there has been other grass flying 
and they're not very right. good. No, you're right. Um, like you said, there's certain things that'll fuck them up oh, really yeah, good. Absolutely. But so if if Litten, like I obviously expect Pup Leo to turn into something great because everyone was you know shitting on Froki forever on X and Y, and it turned into this badass ninja that is in Super Smash Brothers of all games. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping Litten turns into something cool, though the legendary, and I obviously I don't know what's going to happen, the legendary is some kind of like lion thing. I don't feel there's a coincidence that you have this cat, this feline fire type starter and then the lion is your legendary. Like there's, I feel like there's some correlation that's going to happen. There. I know that both, I just listened to the Dex podcast, which is all about Pokemon, uh -huh. and they were just talking about how those are both from Hawaiian lore about their know. gods. That makes sense. There's a bat god? It's really? like, yeah, something like that. Or there was a bat that took their moon god to the moon or something. I don't know exactly what it was. I listened to it last night. But Pokemon you know, comes up with some weird stuff. To be fair, though, I kind of... They usually do a good job researching like, they do. the areas. I'll, I'll give them that. They do. I, um, I kind of hope there is... I'm not against a third type, for the say, unless they're going to introduce more types in there, which I don't know what else you can do at this point, but I'm not against it because there's very few types, you know, like I said, I don't think there's a fire electric out there, but there's very few types out there that have been, like, tried, um, that have, or that haven't been tried, and mm -hmm. so, I mean, most, there's something for everybody, and so I think, you know, adding that third type can at least bring something new to the game, as long as you don't make, you know... What else is weak against ice? As long as you don't make it a, a flying grass dragon type, then you're soft. Because <laughs> then it'd be super fucked up by anybody who has ice moves. Take <laughs> about like your ice cream going both Well, like, it could have one of those stat things mm. to make it not weak to huh. ice. It has chill out. <laughs> that sounds like a bad Arnold Schwarzenegger joke. Chill out. <laughs> It what has, the like, dinosaurs. like, for example, it could have high altitude or something like that, so it's just used to cold climate, and it doesn't... High altitude. It's not Fuck super off. effective. It might be... It might work, but it's not super it's effective. It does normal damage it, instead it, of... It's high damage. altitude. Fuck your ice moves. That's its, that's its actual description. All right. Oh, high altitude. Before we move on, who are we planning on? As of now, without knowing what the others... Like, well, I'm sure most of us will make the final choice when we see the final form. Yeah. Is that how you do it? Yeah. That's what much. Kayla said she does. Yeah, usually. So, who, as of right now, I'm seeing their... What they look like now. Did you, did you look them up? Or? I haven't seen them at all That's, yet. Don't um, worry about it. I'll okay, based on what we just described to you, Jared, who are you, who's your pick? I'll, see, I'm also big on like finding out what the gym leaders are going to be, because I... Well, to be fair, I'm trying to beat the game. It's not like, you know, I'm trying to do all these different things. I, I want to beat the game. So, uh, as it stands, for whatever happens, Litten is my choice purely because I think w of what I think is going to happen with it. Obviously, subject to change with whatever comes across. Okay. Jared? Hold on. Let me look real quick. Okay. There well, was I'm going for Pup Leo just because I love an underdog. <laughs> there you go. Oh, bad pun. Love it. And I'm hoping he goes to a circus theme, like he's sort of a clown now, and maybe his final form will be like the ringmaster or something. There was there was this fun Once picture. he's a clown all three stages, I'm like, no, fuck that. No. There was this uh, fun image where they had like what we want to see out of Rowlet and it turned in, it had these cool three images, and then what it turned into and its second form was like this rich country club douchebag teenager <laughs> who's got like the vest on and his hair swooped out and he's got like a tennis racket. Um, and then the final version is basically an owl version of uh, an owl version of Donald Trump, and it's super good. <laughs> like if I if I could find the picture while while Jared's looking it up, I'm gonna see if I can find that picture because it, it cracked me did up. Did you see that picture for Zoo Batman Court of Rowlet? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> that was a really funny one. Okay, There's I've got Court of Owls. I've got all three pictures. I'll just rate them in order from how I see them now, and then I suppose we can do it again later. How does that happen? So. Um, just like who you who's your starter pick as of now? I actually kind of like uh, Litten best based on looks at the start because the fire cat be, is cool. Doesn't he look like he's gonna be electric? Like, do you see what I'm uh, seeing when you look at him? He, he does kind of have that like Pikachu-y look to yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> but I kind of doubt it. He, I think Fire Dark is probably more where they're trying to go based on the colors. And his whole thing is that he's like in a volcano. I'm rooting. F I'm rooting for the. Crazy as all, fire ice type. No. That would be the shit. Ah, why? You just had wrecked with pain. Shoot. I can't mind the picture. The um, I really like water types, but I uh, I actually kind of like how Rowlet looks better. 
says, I think, yeah, he's going to be leaf flying. You, I think you guys nailed that. Grass well, flying. Uh, oh, we know that's announced. what it is. Yeah. Right, uh, right off the announcement, it was oh, flying. So you already know. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. And then I'm going to put the water type last, but I'm still going to say the water type is going to be awesome. I'm a little biased. I'm just worried it's going to be a little bit too much like Oshawott. Like, I mean, they're very similar animals. Um, when you think about it, so I think I think they were talking about that on the decks where it's like they kind of phoned in Oshawa's last form. Right. It's like I'm an otter, I'm an otter, I'm a seal. <laughs> I'm a seal with clown skills. Beat that. Uh. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough Pokemon. Oh. Let's move on to. <laughs> Let's move on to some X Men news. Great white buffalo. Uh. The next X-Men movie may go to outer space, and I'm super excited about this, because the X-Men have a long history of going to outer space that we have not touched at all over five to six movies. Well, they fucking fuck with Galactus all the time. How have they not gone to space yet, Brian Singer? I don't know anything about what they want to do with new X-Men. I know they, like, sort of reset the timeline with the last movie, but other than that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they're doing Apocalypse next, so I think going to space would be easy, because I think that, or it's within their range of ideas now, because mm -hmm. they, uh... Yeah, they're going to use the, the younger ones, aren't they? Fox mm -hmm. still owns yeah, the rights to Silver Surfer, too, don't they? Yeah. Fuck yeah, X-Men Silver, that's, that'd be great. I, I'd still love for them to do a Fantastic Four X-Men crossover. Because I think that the Fantastic Four would work better as supporting characters. Can we get Mike? Oh, he's gonna be on Black Panther. I was like, if not, can we get Michael B. Jordan back though? Because he was the only good part of that of oh, that terrible movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because yeah, they have a bunch of space characters that they're not using. The Shi'ar, they haven't done anything with. Which it, so they're because they're doing the uh, Phoenix Dark Phoenix again in the next movie. Is what I heard. I'm okay with that if they do it. And well, if they go, that would make sense if for it to go to space. Right. The Shi'ar are like all about the Phoenix. Right. And they haven't done the brood. I talked a little bit about the brood uh, in the last episode, which the brood is basically xenomorphs. They ripped it off. <laughs> they plant oh. eggs in people. But when How they, nice. And they plant eggs in superpower people, but aliens come out with their superpowers. How old is the brood? They came out around the same time. Oh, okay. Because I'm like... Cause I'm Marvel like, has a long history of taking things that already exist. <laughs> cough, cough. So if they leave... Easy. Cough, cough. Basically. If they leave the space on the USS Ishimura... We're not going to be happy. That's what we're saying. That's right what now. I was saying, pitching last week or two weeks ago. Is like, let's just do Alien with the X Men. I would okay love that. that. That would be kind of cool. Bring Predator in again, still, because. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love Alien versus Predator. It's, a, it's not a good movie, but it's fun when they I fight. Just, I just like the fight scenes that between them. Video game was actually really good. Yeah. I'd that love video game was for really them good. to do anything in space. Just go to space. Like I said, Marvel pull up, pull another Spider-Man. Somehow create this super mega corporation with Fox, Sony, and Marvel, and you get X-Men with the Guardians of the Galaxy. That mm -hmm. would be that'd be the perfect that'd be cool. storm right now. I hope they just have costumes in the next one because from what I've seen, I've seen some images of them worth like sort of looking costumes. So I'd love it if they actually had costumes in the next movie. <laughs> Instead of just like, we wear leather. Because <laughs> we're cool. My motorcycle. We lost? Or is there anything else you want to talk about that? Um, Any other ideas? or? Um, no, nah, Hinton and Silver Surfer. I think the Silver Surfer story that would be the best one because X-Men and Silver Surfer had this very long history. I don't know what it was. There was something I saw once where there was like this... Maybe it was a fan theory, or maybe it was like the worst kind of um, comic writing, but like Professor Xavier became the Silver Surfer in something I saw once. It was like this, it was this really one offshoot I saw somewhere on the internet. And I'm like, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard, but that's not a good idea for a movie. But, um, but I mean, you know, people fuck up movies all the time, so why not, why not take a shot at that one? But I, I'd like to see Silver Surfer with X-Men. I think that, I think that'd be my favorite one to do if they're going to space. That'd be cool. Uh, Supergirl's moving to the CW. Woo! It should have been all along. Did you did you watch all Supergirl? Mm -hmm. Yep. What'd you think of it? Have you um, watched any Supergirl, Jared? I've seen some, but... The Red Kryptonite. I don't know. I have a real problem with 
Superman in general because he's overpowered. Yeah, in my we've opinion. had this discussion before. So, we've had this conversation. So <laughs> I I find it really hard to watch those shows, even if they are like they have episodes with some good messages and stuff. I'm just like you're. She's You're not just OP, gonna though. win. I know she's not quite as powerful as Superman is. And she gets fucked up sometimes in that show. Mm-hmm. So especially when she fights Red Tornado, um, that I like the Red Tornado a lot. I agree with you. I like the Red Captain. I uh, the show should have been on CW from the get go. I mean, it, I think it's it might go down in quality a little bit if it was a CW, just because all the effects, like she's flying around in every single episode. But are the effects haven't. The effects on the show really weren't. I'm just talking that like good. stunt work is expensive, like wire work and all that. It's gonna right. cost a lot. But I think they do well with um, the Flash, and they're gonna be centralized all up in Vancouver now. Mm-hmm. Um, they do. I think everything looked on Flash. Like when it was the Flash crossover episode, like her running looked fucking ridiculous. His looked natural. That should be for the Flash. She looked fucking stupid. <laughs> um, and that was all CW doing that Did stuff. Did she do some or not anime? CW, uh, CBS doing that stuff. And so I think on the CW they just. They know how to work with what they've got and make it look better. I, it should have been here to begin with, even though I don't like the idea that it's. I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be. It's hard to think that it's in a realm that's not with the Flash and Arrow. It's there, but it's also in this like third universe. They're on another so, Earth. Yeah, it's on. I, I mean, as far as we can tell, it's on Earth three, I guess. So, um, I, I don't know how to feel about that, but um, I'm ex- I'm excited because I I liked the show, um. For what it was in CBS, and I don't, I don't know if CBS ever gave it a ton of, like a great chance because they put it on Monday night, which nobody watches the Monday night CBS much anymore. Ever because since. everyone wants to watch wrestling. Well, yeah, it's wrestling. Well, it got, it, well, during the year it went up against Monday night football, and it went up against, um, and it was on Thursday for a second to start. It went, um, went up against Thursday night football for a little bit, and then it, uh, you know, goes up against. Um, there, I mean, Monday has some other shows, so I, I don't know where CW is going to put it at, at but, um, but... When I, did they know. just put it on Monday? Well, kind of, but they've already got quite a few... They've got this crazy lineup, like, they've renewed... They'd only be able to put it on Monday or Friday, because they have Flash Arrow Legends. Right, well, the big... I don't part, think they want to put two superhero shows in the same day. Right, and um, the biggest issue they have is, though, they've renewed... CW renewed, like, every show they have, and that's, like, 25 shows... <laughs> Like they, I don't know how they're fitting all these shows in, in their timeline, in their time slots. Um, but I, you're right; it's Monday or Friday, and I think God, I, you just gotta be you gotta be afraid of putting it on Friday. I think Friday it's gonna get its most traction because it's not going up against anything big like, you know, um, Thursdays um, goes up against shows like Big Bang Theory. Um, Tuesdays um, had uh, there's always some stuff going on on Fox and NBC and CBS, but. All the Chicago shows are on like Wednesday, I think, so that's an issue for Arrow. But uh, yeah, it's probably Friday. Maybe maybe they'll kick kick the norm and they'll put it on Saturday. You know, I don't know, but you, you run that risk. So, nice. I, um, I'm excited for her to cross over more. Uh-huh. So I heard the the four part crossover is something that I heard and it got me really excited. I think the um, producer confirmed it. I think it's mm-hmm. definitely gonna happen. And the crossover with the Flash was great. Him and um, I love for them to do it like a Batman versus Superman style Arrow versus Supergirl thing. That would be cool. That'd be awesome. I would like it. Him when uh, when Flash and uh, what's it Quinn? I can't think of her friend, her guy's friend's name. Uh, when when uh, when they were interacting, it was basically like him and Cisco, and it was fucking hilarious. Like they did such a good job with it. I think Grant Gustin makes a perfect flash for what they need to do. So. My guess is the four part crossover is going to be Crisis, and it's going to merge Supergirl with the Arrowverse. Cause that's what Crisis did was uh-huh. combine all these Earths in the comics. Crisis was like we've got he got bought the rights to Captain Marvel, but he's on his own Earth, and uh-huh. we bought the rights to the Question and Blue Beetle and all these Charleston characters. Uh-huh. And they're on their own Earth, and it's like, but we want them to interact. It's like, so let's make up a story where the, all the Earths merge into one big Earth. And that's basically what Crisis was. I forgot Fusion about the movie. Ha! Basically. Fusion Ha! With planets. <laughs> Great, now we got a really fat planet. Good job. Oh, you did it wrong. We did it wrong. Everyone on the planet is obese. <laughs> Hello, America the planet. Oh no! <laughs> Commentary! <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for, like, an era Supergirl fight. That'd be cool. Even though all the superheroes are fighting, but... Right. None of our CW heroes have really fought. Uh, well, Flash and Arrow did. Um, on their first crossover. That was really good. 
Yeah. Because yeah, Flash, I don't, was Crash, Flash mind controlled for some reason? Or he was just really fucking oh, yeah. mad? Because the Rainbow Raider used the red light yeah. and it made him really mad. Yeah, yeah. And, so, um, and so that was really good. And I think they did a good job of how um, Arrow can take over. Because Flash obviously wasn't as experienced as Flash yet. He was still using his superpowers all willy-nilly. And so Arrow being more experienced started big three seasons in. He kind of just like up. set up a big trap and owned him exactly. pretty much. There was a time frame where he just left. Was that the one where... Um, where Flash just left um, the Adam, like kind of like blew up his suit, and we weren't sure if he was alive or dead or something, and he just yeah. and they cut away from the scene, but then he's fine later on. It's like he was just like totally electrocuted and like fucked up. Like what happened with that? Oh, well, they did that to Roy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. To Roy. He just like, shot him with his Emperor Palpatine lasers, and he just flew into a pants, and he just walked away and <laughs> left him there. <laughs> right. It's like is Roy okay? <laughs> like is God. He dead? No wonder Roy left. Do you fucking see how you treat him? Good job. Jeez. <laughs> I've been, I've been very happy with um I've been very happy with Flash. I love Green Arrow, he's my favorite superhero. I've made that known a lot, but God, Flash is just becoming the better show. Like, Arrow easily. needs to find its tone again. So yeah. I think magic they're trying to introduce magic and just to have it in the show and it's like all you have to do is have a guy who does magic. Right. Darren and Dark is there doing magic. You don't have to bring it up all the time. Right. If I feel like they would have done more with Constantine. I think I would have enjoyed some of this magic stuff more than I have. Like, cause I, the episode with Constantine was really funny, really good. So, so. do you think Constantine is going to put Laurel's soul in Black Siren's body? I hope not. I'm tired and of it. Then to have her powers I'm naturally. I'm tired of Katie Cassidy. Like, I like Katie Cassidy I as think she actress. was starting to get her character. She couldn't fight. Right before. I know, but. You're right. Maybe she'll go <laughs> to <laughs> heaven and she'll train with Bruce Lee, and when she comes back, she's gonna Man, be so was, awesome. Because anyway, Katie, Ca Katie Cassidy just never once convinced me that she could, like, pull off a fight scene. I like her in different things. Um, I like her in the 902 or in the Melrose Place spinoff. My sister, seven years older than me, she controlled everything I watched as a kid. So yes, I watched the Nano Two and O or Melrose Place uh, reboot. Um, I liked her in the show Harper's Island on CBS. That was a really good show. If anyone gets a chance to watch it, it's a murder mystery show. So I'd recommend. I think it's on C on Netflix. And um, but she never once convinced me of her being Laurel. And I think the show's producers did the best thing they possibly could by. Like, people are pissed off. It's like, oh my god, you killed black the actual Black Canary. You I, really, up, I really care, couldn't care less. Yeah, I couldn't. Because I think they should kill Thea next. Because there's too many people oh, on their team. Oh, I like Thea a whole There lot. are a lot of people on their team. I, I want Diggle, Felicity, and Oliver again. Yeah, I yeah. don't hate And Larry. maybe Mr. Terrific, once he gets his powers figured out, he can go beyond my yeah, I don't hate all this. I'm not, like, rooting for Oliver and Felicity all the time. Like, you know, all the Felicity. I just meant them are. as a team. Right. But I like Theo a whole lot. Um, I heard they're bringing uh, Colton Haynes back for about five or six episodes next season, uh, B-Roy, which makes um, makes me really happy um, because I think he did a good job. But I like... Uh, they just didn't give him anything to do near the end. You're right. Um, they, they he was just there in the stuff. background, basically. Right. Just like, hi, guys. But I, I, I like the Theo storyline. I, I, I like her character much more than I did any time I like Katie Cassidy. Her, her character just needs to go. Uh, Theo's story was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. But I'm I'm with Tucker. I think she needs to like not be on the team anymore. We've got too many people. Why do all of our heroes people have to die though? I mean, sorry. Okay, well you haven't caught them in Flash, but you know what I'm talking about. Why do we have, have to keep bringing week? people back from the dead? I well, see, that's my thing. <laughs> I, that's why I want Katie Cash to say that is stop letting people come back to life. Like you have to set boundaries eventually. Be like these people are dead, and the producer said she's dead. Gotta fucking set boundaries. Okay. Or they can just start a new life when they come back. Or have Earth 3 <laughs> Laurel show up, but she's really badass. <laughs> I actually think... Um, I hate Black Siren. I think the... Katie Cassidy is the one who plays Laurel, right? Yeah. I think she does a good job in fight scenes when there's a lot of other people in the scenes, too. Mm. Because then you can't identify her flaws so much. It's more seamless with I feel like she's with gotten better. People, the show, you can't see the disgust on my face when Jared said that. But he's wrong. And she's I really, bad. I really hate her like, costume too. I agree. Yeah. If oh. it's just Edward her, if it's just her fighting somebody else, that that doesn't really look very good. But 
Actually, when she was in the boxing scene, like when she was Laurel, she's trying to do the boxing, I thought she, that was the only time she ever convinced me she'd fight. And then mm -hmm. she puts on the Black Canary costume, and she can't do shit. And it's she, the Edward Scissorhands yeah, costume. And she only uses her fucking, um, Maybe the, her awesome voice thing, like, three times in the whole show. Maybe it's because if she moves the wrong way in the suit, the suit will rip. <laughs> She and she'll have a wardrobe malfunction. You're right, she does. <laughs> and then like, she does not using it right, and then that other girl comes in and she adjusts it, and it works great right. now. Yeah, Cisco. Are we talking this... about the suit or the voice mod? Her voice mod. Her voice. <laughs> voice I'm kidding. Well, she, the other girl's doing a better job too. I didn't hate her as Black Siren. She still couldn't fight worth shit. Um, as at least Black she Siren, was fucking up Flash for a little bit. Yeah, at least she was. She was much better than that. Like I said, Flash. Flash is becoming the stronger show. I do like Legends of Flash Tomorrow. Flash is really good. It is really good. And it's really funny. Like I said, I think Grant Gustin, I think they picked the best titular characters. I think Stephen Amell does a great job as um as Oliver. And Grant Gustin does a great job as Barry. Um, but, but yeah, you're right. It's a lot of their surrounding supporting characters. Like I know CW is all about inclusivity. And they like the, diver the diverseness, which is obviously a good thing. But at the same time, like... I, I feel like they're they're forcing storylines for diversity's sake sometimes, and it makes things a little like too much. Yeah, a little too much. I think if the I don't know, because I love Diggle, he's great. I yeah. love more Diggle. Diggle's right. cool. But I don't think that's forced at all because people like Diggle. Yeah. And I, I feel well, like on the Flash, Daniel Panabaker, I don't care for her at all. Diggle really? comes off. I like her. See, I, I hate don't think Iris. he's a good actress. I've I saw a status I posted Time Hop where. I mean, there's so many times they could have just killed Iris in Flash, and they haven't killed Iris, and that's pissed me off, because I cannot stand Iris to save I, I'm anyone. fine with Iris. can't stand her at all. She's awful. All right. Well, we're running out of time, so let's move on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think this has been rumored multiple times, but the Blade, Ghost Rider, and Moon Knight rumors are back again. Who excited? You know who any of those people are? Uh, I know who Blade is. is. <laughs> and Ghost Rider. Yeah, I know who Ghost Rider is. Moon Knight's like... Basically, he's like if Batman had split personality. Yep. Okay. Sure. He's a crazy think, of, think of Azrael. He's I I very much compare him to Azrael. Kinda. That, like I think that's a good comparison. He worships a god, the Egyptian god, who gave brought him back to life. Maybe, or he hallucinated it because <laughs> he's crazy. <laughs> a set of his thing is like, is this guy crazy or is he like the servant of some Egyptian god? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. And I'd love to see that on a show. I thought like Ghost Rider would be the hardest to do, just because it's a flaming skull. Yeah. Especially with the... Oh, sorry. Yeah, plus, you know, last Ghost Rider movie. As long as Nicolas Cage isn't in it, I'm fine with it. You know. Especially with the way they're doing the Netflix shows, I I agree with you. The Ghost Rider stuff that, like, they, they never do anything mystical on the shows. Like, up in the movies, that works a lot better, but on, you know, Daredevil and Jessica Jones, it's all very gritty action there's there's nothing mystical about anything that goes on in those shows. Even, even with amazing. Yeah, even with um, Kilgrave, I mean, there was nothing it's, mystical. It was all just you know this mental thing, and people did things that way. But there was no flashing lights or something. So I just don't know how you do Ghost Rider that way. I think Iron Fist is going to introduce a lot of that stuff. Even then, but I think Iron Fist is a lot of the way where you don't have to be mystical about it, even though he is inherently mystical. He's from a magical kung fu city from another dimension. <laughs> That's fair. I think the best way for them to do Ghost Rider is to have him sort of be like a background character, where he's not the primary focus of any of the shows. He just shows up and does his thing, and they can just kind of have him there for a few moments. Like an anthology thing? Yeah. Ooh, that's good. That's what I pitch for The Punisher, too, is to like show the bad guys and then... We have the bad guy story, and then the Punisher shows up and kills him. <laughs> all right, that makes sense. All I all I hope for is if they do the Defenders, and Tucker's probably gonna kick me off his podcast. I'm just say this. All I hope is if they do Defenders, I just I want Howard the Duck. That's all I want. Howard the Duck. I just want fucking that movie's not good, but it's fun to watch. And he he's it's he's he's actually a great character in the comics. I I read a couple comics with the Defenders and, and She Hulk, Howard the Duck, and there were a couple other people. That'd be great. I want Howard the Duck part of the Defenders. It would be now. too expensive. <laughs> it would be All that CGI. Unless they get the suit out of storage. Yeah, exactly. Get the terrible duck costume. With get the get the female Howard the Duck with the duck boobs. Yeah, get, duck get boobs. that costume. <laughs> I'd love for them to do some anything with Ghost Rider that does not have Nimbus Cage in it. <laughs> I think the second Ghost Rider movie, I really loved the villain. The his costume, oh, just okay. how it looked burnt and his skull looked better, and because mm -hmm. the first one was, looked kind of cheap to me. 
I think they figured out how his look in the second one, but Nicolas Cage hadn't figured out how to be good. <laughs> so, um, I I've actually been thinking about that. Because like when he gets in the, he get. Have you seen the second Ghost Rider? Yes. He gets in like the the. It's Whatever, all, movie, all the different vehicles movie. that he gets in, and once he's in the vehicle, it turns on, sets on fire, mm -hmm. and he gets in like the construction wheel, mm -hmm. and then the wheel starts spinning. And how did that movie that. get a second film? Like that first movie was not very good either. How, how did it get a second? Maybe. They but, tried to reboot it, and then it was poor casting. It didn't reboot it. It was just like, was it a sequel? Was it? It was a sequel. Well, there's Ghost Rider, but then there's the oh, sequel okay. to it, and that's why I'm wondering where the sequel. Came. All I can think of is. Put take the English cage characters and put like Charlie Hunnam in there. I think it'd be a much better movie overall, acting wise. And the script's still not super strong, but you're right. All the effects. I think mm -hmm. Charlie Hunnam obviously looks good on a motorcycle. Was proven by Sons of Anarchy, and so put put him in there. He he needs to get in a Marvel in a superhero movie like yesterday. He's been vying for it forever. So mm -hmm. it's just like with those big roles, they want somebody who's like really like a, a movie star. And yeah. He's not really starred in a lot of movies. He's a big TV star, and I think I think he would attract a different set of audience because people but, like him. But they what like the whole way movies are made now. It's like they have to take their. It's like a piece of paper with like who's in it and like mm -hmm. the logo, and they take it to like a, a conference mm -hmm. of international billionaires or whatever. <laughs> They're like, this is who's in it. This is these are the stars. If they know the names, they'll get more money. Like if I say Scarlett Johansson is Ghost Rider, they'll be like, oh. Okay, if I'm like a, Charlie Hunnam, like who the fuck's that? You make a valid point because I don't think Ant Man gets made without someone like Paul Rudd. Like Edgar As Wright, it. Paul Rudd. These people make money. Right. To be fair, I didn't know who Edgar Wright was when when oh, the name was announced. So, so Charlie Murphy's not on the table, is what you're saying? Who the fuck's Charlie Murphy? <laughs> Charlie Murphy. Oh. Yes. But, uh, Jasmine for the Chappelle show. Oh no! Yeah, people would know. People would see Charlie Hunter. They think Jack Sosanthony. Maybe they would look at Pacific Rim and think think of him. But yeah, Pacific didn't make a lot of money though. It was a good movie. Internationally, I it made. I think it made more internationally. Oh, that'd be good. Movie. I like it. But I, like uh, it. I love. <laughs> but I love Pacific Rim. So. That's a yeah. That's a great movie. Uh, I think the last thing for our our tournament picks, uh, the new Ghostbusters trailer. I have no care. I just don't... See, I'm actually not a big fan of the Ghostbusters franchise to begin with. It's never been something I, I got drawn to. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. I've never cared about Ghost, Ghostbusters, and I don't care about it now that it's an all-female cast. If I didn't care about Dan Aykroyd and uh, Bill Murray and Honey, right. I blew up the kids or whatever, you know, why would I care about Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy and Leslie Jones and Kate McKinnon, you know? Though obviously I know all their names better than I knew the original cast names. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, it might be good. Um, they just I've, released a new trailer that some people are saying is a little bit better. It's I haven't better. seen the new trailer yet. Um, it's the first trailer people were... I think it's got the most dislikes on YouTube right now. First one. Oh, yeah. More than Justin Bieber's baby. Oh, that, is, that must be pretty bad. <laughs> right. With the all-female cast, you know, that could work out perfectly fine, you know. It's just a different take on the original in that sense. Um, I don't know. I would really want him to bring back uh, Slimer. He's predominantly yeah. in it, and that's what this new Because, I mean, a lot. if I care about anybody in the Ghostbusters movie, it's the green ghost. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. He was hilarious. I think the problem we're seeing now is, it, it, you know, there are other people out there, they're trying to shove women down our throats. No, they're, I mean, that is actually a really good cast of, of comedic actresses. Mm -hmm. I, I very much like them all. On a lot of Three of them are SNL alums or current on there, and then Melissa McCarthy draws big mon um big names um to movies um i think the problem right now is the director the director or producer with Ke kevin something or whatever Feek. is it oh yeah him he has been like the biggest dick in the world he's like all you people are sexist and terrible for not wanting to see this movie anyone doesn't see this movie is a sexist and a, and a racist and it's like that's like, he, just, he's, he's been the problem, I think. That's why it drives people, people really away from off. your movie. <laughs> yeah, like, he's been turning people off. He's turned me off because I'm like, dude, like, I, I like these people. I love Leslie Jones. I'm one of, the, like, the seven people who likes Leslie Jones on SNL. And you make me not want to watch this movie because you're being a total dweeb about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't care that much about it. I like Ghostbusters. 
I heard someone say that Ghostbusters was like, it wasn't a comedy first, it was another kind of like a sci-fi sort mm -hmm. of ghost movie first with jokes in it, right. and this feels more like a comedy, and I see that a lot, uh, but I'm, I'm going to see it, I don't think this trailer reflects, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of jokes in there that are good. I think Kate McKenna is going to be the best part. She's she's um, consistently, when I'm watching the trailer, her parts are the funniest. Right. But, yeah, I'm going to see funny. it. I don't have any hate for it. Right. It's it's not a movie I think I want to spend waste my money in theaters to see. Because I, I, I just don't think it's a movie worth seeing in theaters. It's not like Turtles. Turtles would be great. <laughs> well, well, Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. That's my iffy movie of the summer. <laughs> Ghostbusters or Turtles? Turtles. <laughs> Turtles. Mm. Uh, Alright, so those are our picks, or those are our topics for this uh, episode. We're heading now into our Tournament of Losers picks. And if you don't know, it's the new segment of the show. It's like a tournament style. We're in preliminaries now before we fill up all the slots on our bracket. Uh, the characters we're picking are Marvel or DC, heroes or villains, who are more obscure, so no Captain America's or Superman's, because... Those people will win if we pick them. Can I interest you in the Deadpool? Cool. You're not no. obscure. If not you obscure. can, if I show a picture of it to your mom and she can knows who it is. They're not going to be in this. <laughs> so, uh, this is round two preliminaries. Kyle, why don't you hit us with your pick? All right, my pick is the ever lovable Arabian Knight from the Marvel series. Series, universe. Marvel comics. Yeah, that. Uh, Marvel Comics. Arabian Night first appeared in 1980. I'm actually reading from an encyclopedia right now for anyone who cares for how I'm going to read this off. Um, appeared in the 1980s in Incredible Hulk. Uh, having uncovered the tomb of his ancestor who had been a hero to his people, Abdul Kamar acquired his three, three mystic weapons and set out to carry on his tradition as the modern Arabian Night. He fought for justice for many years, but eventually perished when his life force was randomly and remotely sucked away from him from the life-draining human sapien, leaving him a casualty of a conflict which had, which had nothing to do with him. So he... So he's dead. He is dead. <laughs> Hold <laughs> on. Let me let me make my case. So he loses? No, actually, he never loses. <laughs> so the corpse of Arabian Knight versus... <laughs> so here's the problem with it, okay? Uh, first off, he helps Hulk a lot in the in the comics. He's there, um, especially in like Middle East conflicts, uh, things like that. He honestly looks like the most stereotypical Aladdin. Yeah, he's wearing a turban. He's got he looks like Majin. Pants. He's got that sword. He looks like he Majin, the, but yeah, he kind of just he has his he cummerbund. Pink. He's very pink, like he's pink with you, white pants that are. I like, was you were saying if my if your mom knows who it is, I'm like I don't know if my racist grandma you know looks at him. She's like oh. And say something Irish? super racist about him, and then they would know who, who that is. So that's not exactly fair. They'd be like, ah, Arabian racist. Um, but he fights. He fights alongside the Hulk uh, quite a bit. But here's in Ghost Rider. Here's why I want you want you to pick my character, okay? Because he unjustly, for no reason at all, there was a super guy that says that the human, the humus sapien, who he was trying to defeat bad guys, and he just started sucking life force out of the earth. He was like. 50,000 miles away. That's not that's impossible. He's like a lot of miles away. And in the Middle East, suddenly this superpowered being Arabian Knight just gets his life taken from him for no goddamn reason. Because some guy randomly is like, ah, oh, I'm just sucking the life out of random people. Good job, Goku. <laughs> you took it too far this Muffin time. Muffin button. Um, <laughs> but so I say pick Arabian Knight. Give him a chance in this tournament that he did not get in the Marvel comics. That was so unjustly taken from him. Pick Arabian Knight. Unless you hate my voice because I've heard it on the podcast and it doesn't sound great. But pick him anyways. <laughs> Alright. Arabian Knight is Kyle's pick. And my pick is Dr. Jonathan On. O-H-N-N -N On. A.K.A. The Spot. The Spot. Was he Marvel DC? He's Marvel villain. Well, what's he is a scientist who worked for the Kingpin. Trying to recreate Cloak's power, and Cloak is, uh, he's a black guy in a cloak, and he can teleport. And he, there was like a power outage, and he, he finally opened this portal, and he, he's like, oh no, there's a power outage. I'll lose this portal, so I'll, I'll just jump through it for no goddamn reason. 
and then he jumped into this portal and he got covered in all these little portals and now his body's completely covered with polka dots these black polka dots he looks like spider-man in polka dots and he can pull those spots those spots off of him and they are portals sweet oh fuck and there's some great That's a really good choice there's like some some great comics of him fighting spider-man where he throws his his spots and he can like punch in one of the spots in the spot by Spider-Man's face, like his fist comes out of it and he hits him. Or Spider-Man goes and tries and punches him and it goes into one of his spots and then the fist comes out of another spot on his body and he punches himself. It sort of reminds me of Quan Chi in Mortal Kombat, kind of how they do that. Kind of. Am I allowed to tell you why not to pick Tucker's character? Because if so, he got killed by Elektra of all people. He like it wasn't better. some super thing. He got killed by Elektra. Jennifer Garner killed him. That's not good. I'm That's not really like, bad. But she's not Jennifer Garner anymore. Fuck off. She's been period. upgraded. Nobody asked your opinion she right now. She has been upgraded. So yeah, we got the Arabian Night versus the Spot. God damn it. So everybody make sure to check my Facebook this weekend for the link to the Twitter poll. Because I don't do polls on Facebook anymore apparently. Really? I thought I just did one the other day. I don't know. I'll see if I can or find somebody who can do it for you, maybe, or can help me figure right, out. Just check it. the link. Whatever. I'm trying to be helpful. It should. If it's if you're listening to this after that, it's probably done because there's only 24 hours. But I'll post it on Sunday at noon, so it gives you people time to. Well, I'll do it on Monday. How about that? And that that'll give people time to listen to it on Sunday and be like, oh, there's a podcast. I'll listen to it. We hope. Fair enough. We hope. <laughs> we love and, you, podcast listeners. And uh, you can vote. Maybe I'll get more than three votes this time. <laughs> you're, you're I'm not sure if you can vote if you're not on Twitter. We'll have to test that. Maybe not. Why don't they probably just send Tucker a message? Like, if, why don't if you're that? like, I want to vote, but I don't want to make a Twitter, maybe I'll try and find. Like, I'm sure there are services where it's like, here's a poll. To click this yeah. link and vote, and I can see the results. Why don't they just send you a message and you add it up? On Facebook, be like, "Here, message me on Facebook, and I will add up your choices, your your votes, and keep it in a record, and then you'll reveal it later." Okay, whatever. That's a good idea. Whatever that works. That works. As long as we're getting people. Oh God, I didn't even recognize your shirt. That's badass. Oh yeah. I fucking love that shirt. Pretty cool. Oh, that was super ambiguous for anybody who's listening. It's like, oh, what what's on this cool shirt? And they'll, they'll never know. It's a skeleton he, he, riding a wave of. Tacos Here on a surfboard it, uh, that's Donald Trump. <laughs> Here's a hint. His shirt will be revealed next time on the podcast. Yeah. Do you, do, do, you guys do, do, have do, do, any do. social media you want to plug? Oh, social media. Um, don't go to my Facebook or Twitter because you'll be incredibly bored. It's a bad idea. I suck. I don't have social media. Jared's off the grid. 100%. Jared has a Twitter. He just doesn't know about it. Yeah, so we started. That's that probably either. true. Actually. This is a real Jared Miller. It's 100% gay porn. Reblogs, retweets. Oh, come on now. Where do you think I went to that's, the link for that? My, below little, the pony, belt, my little pony gay porn. It was on your Twitter account. Yep. Duh. Somebody's framing me. It's a setup. <laughs> that's what they all say. It's a setup. <laughs> a picture John has of you in Starbright. Furry costume. Furry costume. It says otherwise. Otherwise, Jared. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Beverage Podcast. The Beverage Podcast is available on Libsyn at uh, thebeveragepodcast.libsyn.com. It is also available on iTunes and the Beverage YouTube channel. You can also like us on Facebook, uh, the Beverage Podcast. We also have Twitters. My Twitter is the Beverage, and Marcus's is the Mook eighty six. Uh, we also have a WordPress, which is linked on our Facebook page. I don't know what it is, because I don't have it written down on my paper. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. See you next time.